it is a national SW54. It is a uh, multi-band AM CW receiver. Bought it from a gentleman here a while back. Uh, he said, oh yeah, it works just fine. Well, it doesn't really work that fine. I'm not going to plug it in. Yeah, why not? We'll plug it in and let you hear it. Put it on the Variac. We're going to do the output. One, two, turn it on. And if everything is working right. You'll hear it if it don't blow up. current there it is oh yeah oh yeah he listened to it anyway I'll take it apart do a recap what it is. It's got bad filter caps. Let's take off the knobs. It's missing a knob as you can see right here. You know, just a second here. Bad light. Anyway, got some three little old knobs. You got the tuning knob, which is this is broke as you can as you can see. It just keeps going round and round in circles. Anyway, I'm going to take this uh, tuning knob off with small screwdriver. Not a problem. There. Alright, it's a metal, full metal case. I think this thing's made. I'm not sure when this thing was made, to be honest with you. Got a pair of headphones out so right here. Here's your antennas. An external ground port here. The bottom comes off right here. Back cover. So what we'll do is we'll take trusty dusty old what is this thing? Hyper tough. It's a four volt lithium ion cordless screwdriver. Got torque settings. Right here, one through five with the drill attachment. One through six, I'm sorry, with the one through six with the drill attachment. Not drill attachment, but you know, disables the clutch, bypasses the clutch. But anyway, very handy tool, especially if you don't want to keep turning screwdrivers all the time. Take the back off. It is an interlock, which means when you take the cord off right here. It's fastened to the back, which takes the cord off. It keeps you from plugging it in and blowing yourself up. Uh, I ordered the parts from Mauser, but I forgot to order this cord. It's not that bad a shape. I'm probably going to just leave it like it is for right now. One day I'll get a fix. Anyway, there's the insides of it. Think of the 5-2. Let me see here. We'll get it apart and then we'll look at it real quick. So let's go ahead and take the bottom cover off, which they made it kind of nice. It will... Let's see here. It will come apart. In other words, you can service this thing. Just take the back off. Take the bottom off. Do any kind of service that you need to do to it. And there's the bottom. Not too bad. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah. Right here. A little bit of wax. You can see a little bit of... You can see the discolorations. That's all coming from all the electrolytic or the, all the capacitors in this radio. Which is full of them. But we'll get you a closer look here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead take these two screws off here 
that one there is messed up. These two little bitty screws here holds the, uh, the three front switches right here. Just another little, little sub chassis, I guess you could call it. I need to replace that screw because it's wore out. I didn't do it. Yeah, maybe I did. Hell, I don't remember. Alright, now that I got that done, you take these two four rubber feet off, which holds the chassis on. And these things, get my camera up here, they're hardened, kind of old, but they work. And uh, I'm not going to worry about replacing them. I've already had this radio apart once. And I've already ordered the parts. I'm actually waiting on the parts. The parts should be in today. But this is the original filter cap. Let me uh, let me tell you. Let me get through taking this apart. We'll look inside it. We'll look inside this thing, and I'll show you what it is. It's basically it's basically an American Fire radio that's been converted I guess you could say to uh, pick up shortwave bands and something there we are it pulls out voila lay it on the face I think we can do that safely that's the insides of it got insulation on it to keep the thing from getting too hot to the touch because it is a metal metal case you can clean up this front bezel and all this stuff right here as you can see it's a little nasty it's got a little bit of little bit of surface rust on it but i'm not going to scrub it too hard because it could use a good cleaning but i think we i think it'll clean up fine fine enough for what it is all right so let me get you closer in here i'll be right back All right, tell you what, let me just do it this way. All right, there's the insides of the radio. Not much to it. Let's just flip it over, see what's on top. Yeah, the black, black uh, background of the dial. Let's turn it around if I can do it without breaking it. Ah, there we go. There's a dial. The dial works. I don't think it does. Last time. It's a little stiff. But don't have to do anything to that, thank goodness. Because I really hate dial cords. Feels a little stiff, I'm not sure why, but it works. This is the dial, uh, front dial looks fine. Just the back, the backing here, backing here needs to have a little love, it needs a little tension, which I think all I gotta do is loosen, loosen this screw up and just stretch that back out. I think it's just because of age and humidity, it's just expanded a little bit. There's your three front switches which goes on the case here. You got receive, standby, AM, CW, speaker, uh, phones, then you got your band switch, your volume, of course your tuning dial, main tuning, and band spread. So let's see, we got, to, here's your switches right here. Looks like they're isolated from ground. Never noticed that. It's interesting. All right, let's see. We've got a pilot light, probably a, don't know, number 47 or something. Yep, number 47 bulb right there. Let's see here. What we got here? Let's see. Rectifier tube. What is that? A 35W4. I don't know. Is that old Phillips? Let's see if I'm, my memory's right. 
I take that back. 35Z5. Let me get that glare off of 35Z5 rectifier. Made in USA. Got Phillips on there. Trying to find a date code. Let's see. There we go. Date code. Made in USA. I'm sure there's a date code on there. I just ain't seen it yet. Let's see. Well, I don't see a date code. Let's see. Then we got uh, this is the output tube right here. That should be a 50 C5, which it is. A General Electric, which I see a 1 of 48. Yep, 1 of 48. Does that mean it was made 1948? It's possible. Let's see what this tube is right here. It's a General Electric branded output tube. And here is one marked with a Sylvania marking. Sylvania made in the USA. This is a 12BA6. If I can find a date code on that dude. Probably is. I can't read it. I don't have my glasses on. Anyway, that's the IF amplifier, I believe. And here is the detector. Right here. Get it out. What's it going to be? It's going to be got ooh, a 12 AV6. Another Sylvania. It's got an AKK on there. I honestly don't remember my tube code. If you can see it good or not. See the white on there. So a little oxidation on there. We'll just we'll clean it off with a little deox. I'll do that off camera because that get, gets kind of boring. Anyway, that's your detector. Probably another eye. And this one right here is your oscillator. First amplifier, and it's probably what is this thing? Glary. Hang on. Clean it. Yeah, 12BE6. That's your oscillator. Let's yeah, see, the pins on that looks fairly decent, but I'll clean them off too. Well, the chassis is a little dirty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little dirty. I'm not sure it's worth. I'm not sure the it's the chassis is worth taking all apart and cleaning and all that. There is a serial number under all this. Serial number. Let's see if we can clean all that off. I don't know. I can't really tell. It was better till I cleaned it. Clean it, see if I can get a clean it. All right, I think I cleaned it off. See if I can get you guys to see it a little bit. It's hard to find it with that glare from the lights, but anyway, the serial number on this thing is 333 space 2912. I know it's hard for you guys to see. Anyway, 5 2 radio 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's just like your old AM radio that you have on your used to have in your house years ago it just has a little bit more bands that it picks up so anyway let me get this thing turned over and let's have a look under the hood oh by the way this is what I was talking about the tuning dial a while ago that's the band spread indicator which is broke I'm going to take an epoxy of that. I'll do that off screen. I'm going to take it off here in just a few minutes. There's the insides of this bad boy. All these old wax paper caps. You got some people say, oh, they're good. You can reform them. Well, I think they're talking about elect electrolytics, and I don't care. Unless it's a very rare electrolytic, I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about reforming it. I just don't. I just don't think that's right. But these are uh, these are what they call wax capacitors right here, and as you can see, 
right here I peel that off that capacitor that is wax they're dipped in wax when they're manufactured and these things are you see a wax capacitor I don't care what it is I change them anyway I forgot how many there was in here but I've got them all marked I've already been in here once just getting part numbers but um, this is the RF section right here one for each band you this is what how you adjust it to, to calibrate it for each band and we'll go through that later on but let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve did I miss anything one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and there's one down there that's really really bad you can see the end has come off of it 12 I think it's 12 13 there was 13 wax, 13 wax capacitors in here and two electrolytics here's the electrolytics here I don't know if I showed them to you but that's the original electrolyte like a stick of dynamite but that was in this bracket right here I just cut it out I gotta I just cut the thing out so I could get to it but they also had this device this old capacitor here tacked into it down here around the rectifier socket and I had not even unwrapped that yet I'll run wrap it here in just a minute off camera or I'll put the camera back on the tripod then we can look at it and as far as the resistors in this thing about two-thirds of them are out of tolerance so like that called a rounding right here notice the shape it's kind of it's kind of puny looking it's roundy as compared to this right here which is uh, uh, what they call those things oh my type it's uh, I forget what's kind of boy I just ain't, I ain't worth a flip today anyway this these here are more reliable than these these are little roundies here I'll remember. I can't think of the name of it. Sorry about that. Anyway, about two thirds of these. Here's another roundy down here. That one was out of tolerance. This one was out of tolerance. This is a 15K, which it looks like an 18, but the map, the book says 15K. Anyway, that resistor or so was out of tolerance. And believe it or not. This in here was a little bit out of tolerance, but then again, it's a 20% across the uh, headphones jack, so we're not really worried about that. I don't remember if this one was a good one or a bad one. There's another roundy back down there. It looks like a, uh, it's like a 10 meg right down there. I think it was kind. Of, I think it was high in value. Let's see, and there's another roundy down here. There's another Allen Bradley. That's the type I'm thinking about. Allen Bradley resistors. Those are normally not really bad. But I checked on all the resistors. I found several of them without a tolerance. And uh, some, you know, you know, as far as what the part numbers are, or how many, you know, what parts did I need for this thing? Well, pretty much, there's two pages of parts list for this thing, and I probably need about one page of parts for this thing. Let's see, what else? Uh, la, 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 la. I'm going to take this here off. I'm going to epoxy it, get it fixed, because my parts are supposed to have shown up today. They didn't. So, I'm not sure what. I may not get them today, but this has got to come off and get repaired anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do all this mess off camera. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off, get it epoxied, clean it up, clean this up. Um, I don't think I'm going to worry about the chassis too much, but I'll probably take the tubes out, clean them, clean the sockets on them and all that. Uh, I know the output transformer is good because we hired the hum a while ago, so I ain't got to worry about that. So I'm just going to give it a clean up off camera, go ahead and fix this dial, get that straightened up, probably clean the controls and the switches, and uh, just do things like that. It's rather more boring than just listen to me talk. Anyway, I will get back to you when I got something worth talking about. All right, see you then. All right, well, a couple of things. Pull the band spread. Uh, dial off 
where it was broke on the shaft and pull the retainer off. And it disintegrated. These little pieces right here disintegrated off the front of the shaft, which goes on to the front of this. So, got to figure out how I'm going to fix that. I have an idea, but I I gotta think about it. Now here's that old filter cap that was in there that somebody had put in here Lord knows how long ago to replace a couple of sections of the main filter cap. It's all wrapped up some nice old-fashioned electrical tape. So let's go ahead and let me go ahead and uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and take it apart. See what it's all about. zoom in a little bit guys. I don't have a monitor on me right now. I see what I'm doing. It's like an old sprig. Oh yeah. If you can see that, come on focus the camera. You can see that right there. Right here. See that little dot? Right there. Need some more light. Let me get y'all over here where I can get a little bit more light. There we go. Right there. That is definitely old and dried out and it's done spewed all the guts. Definitely a whole bad capacitor. Anyway, let's unwrap this dude. It's almost Christmas. Okay, let's get her unwrapped, see who made this thing. What's wrong about being a spray? It's a dual 40 at 160 capacitor. Name by Ducati. D U C A T I. Made in Italy. It says 40 mic fared, 40 mic, let's see, 40 mic fared, 40 mic fared ground. Yum. Alright, well let me figure out what I'm going to do with that. Uh, let me figure out what I'm going to do with uh, let me figure out what I'm going to do with this right here. Alright guys, I got it back here. Took the dial off. Uh, Cleaned up, cleaned up the uh, tuning indicator right here. Uh, still a little slack in the uh, in the black backing on the thing, but I couldn't really make it. I couldn't really make it without going and doing things I didn't want to do. It's not that important. Uh, so I went in and cleaned it up. It looks a lot better already. Uh, changes number 47 bulb right here. It was definitely open. So once I get it powered up, I'll adjust the bulb and get it to where this front plastic uh, dial indicator here will light up properly. I'll get that taken care of. Let's see. Um, the other thing is let me just move the whole thing here. I went and I'm going to try this. I actually took a small all Radio Shack quarter inch knob cut the front back off of it. The, the knob has a screw, a set screw insert you see the little hole on the back 
Anyway, I took cut it, took it to the back shop, cut the front back off of it, shortened it as much as I could, brought it back up here, put it on the one of the work vices, and went ahead and epoxied it. So that's got to dry, but I think that's going to work just fine. I'm uh, not going to be able to use the uh, a little uh, spring clip right here that was on the front. It was like somebody had repaired this previously. You can probably see right here that little bit of yellow looking thing. That was actually some old glue. But the old piece just shattered into multiple pieces there. And I just I decided I'm going to go that route that way. I'm going to epoxy the heck out of it with Gorilla Glue. Uh, gorilla glue and I think that will take care of it. Just going to let that set for a while. Alright, so now I need to figure out remember what I'm supposed to be doing next. I just checked just checked my UPS shipping and it's still supposed to be that the part is the parts are supposed to be delivered today here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my tube tester out. Nothing special. And we'll go ahead and take each one of these tubes out and check them for functionality. I know the rectifier works because we heard the noise coming out of it. Well, let's go ahead and get the tube tester out. We'll check these tubes to see how good they are. Hold on. This is not none of these big hickocks or nothing like that. That's on my bucket list. I'm going to buy a big one one of these days. They checks microconductance in other words how good the tube actually amplifies I'll get one one day that's on my bucket list I've always met plenty of them that I'd like but I've never time I meet one I like I never had the money you know how that goes some of these fellers let's see set it this is a Syncor TC162 tube tester, Mighty Might uh, five, 7. Anyway, I'm going to pull this tube out. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Try not to knock all the, get all the nasties off of it. Make it look a little better. Look like a brand new one. Look at there. Just going to look up the date codes, calculations on this. Because honestly, it's been so long. I got started in radio and TV years ago. I'm, I'm almost 60 right now. But I got started in uh, electronics back, back in the late 70s. Actually, sooner than that, but I officially went to school in the late 70s. I started work in a TV shop um, in Winfield, Louisiana, back, I think I was 17 or 18. And I worked there till, I worked there for about 10 years. So, believe it or not, I was the top of the electronics class back way back then. Of course, we couldn't tell that now. But anyway, I used to know all this stuff. Don't get to do it a whole lot. That's why I started getting back into it. Anyway, this is a 35Z5 rectifier tube. Uh, so it's going to be A. will be number 3. We'll set number 3. And then B, of course, is going to be 35. B is the filament voltage. So we'll set it 30 to 38. That would be 35. All right. Let's see. So 35 is So the next one is going to be C will be the load. So that will be B. And then D is going to be the setup. And that will be 5. And it's going to be socket 1. So let's check emission right here. If I did this right. Yeah, we got something. It's going out of the bad. Oh, it kicked way up there in the good region. Over 100. Look at that. It ain't got a grid, so we ain't got to do grid leak. So I'm going to let it warm up a second. And we'll do a life test. And all that does is reduces the heater voltage 10%. So if it is a weak tube, like 
like uh, it will uh, when you reduce the heater voltage you, you know it will uh, the emissions if you have enough if you have enough material left on the uh, cathode then when you reduce the heater voltage your emission shouldn't change but if you pretty much spin all your coatings on your cathode um, and you don't have any life left in it when you reduce the voltage you'll immediately see it and where that comes into play is on old televisions and stuff like this out in the country that a lot of people have you know they're in the they're subject to old poor power lines and stuff like that and they're, maybe their line voltage ain't 118, 120 it might be more in the order of 105 something like that so uh, a lot of times I've had TV sets and radios come in that they said that things didn't work when they were at home but when it comes into the shop it worked fine uh, but that's because the shop had a higher voltage and uh, so what you would do is you would plug your TV or your radio into a variable uh, into a, a variac and you would reduce the voltage of the set just a few volts and then you would see the problem a lot of times it would go from working fine to not working but then you would just determine which tube you think it was put it in the tube tester and you would use this light test and you would find what the problem was. But anyway, let's do a live test. I've activated the live test and just wait. I don't, you can't see it, but the, you can see where the filament has dimmed. But my mission is still in the upper, upper, over 110, let's say that'd be 105. No, that's just kind of relative. This tube I will pronounce good. Alright, so let's reset it. This is a good tube. That's good to know. Still don't know how old it is. Alright, now we have this output tube, which is a 50C5. It's marked it's branded GE. And you know what they say about GE, brings good things to life. Cleaned it up a little bit just to make it look a little better. I decided I'm not cleaning the chassis of this thing. That's just too much. I can take a little bit of vinegar solution and make something to eat all this. I'm not going that far. This is never going to get rid of it till I die, probably. Anyway, 50C5. Alright. So a 50C5, you set A. You set it A for 5. And then B would be 50. That would be between the 39 and 50 setting. And then number C, here's your A, B, C, D. Anyway, uh, C will be C will be C. That threw me off. D will be two. That's the uh, setup, and then of course socket number four, which is here. All right, here we go. Missions. See how this one works. Sorry about the background noise, ladies and gentlemen. That's one of my my two meter amateur radio. Let's see, it's made it to the in between stage. Yeah, it's getting almost over to the good. Yeah, it's 70, so yeah, it made it in the green. So let's see, let's do grid leakage. Grid leakage is good. Shorts, we rotate for shorts. No shorts. So we're at an 80 percent. I don't know. We'll call it 80 percent. It's still climbing just a little bit. The tube is probably a little old. No telling how old this tube is. Let it warm up a second and we'll do, we'll do the live test again. Alright, we climbed up to about 80. Five now. Still warming up. It's still he it probably hadn't been run in ages. So here we go. Let's test it. Live test activated. Live test activated. It's still at 85 right now. It's still holding. It's not dropped. Still has not dropped. Alright, I will call that one good. 
Yay! The output tube is good! Yoo-hoo! Awesome! Now then, down to the IF amplifier, which is Sylvania, made in the USA. Let's see, and it is, let's see, I think it's a 12BA6. Should be, that's what normally in those. But just because I'm getting old and my mind is not as sharp as it used to be. Memory for sure. Yep, 12 Baker Adam 6. I'm just making sure. May not have one in my stock and I don't want to blow it up. So let's look up 12 BA6 in the book. 12 BA6, all right. So first thing to do is 12 BA6 set B, which is the filament voltage. We'll set it, take some glasses off. Or 12 BA6, all right. Let's set up B, which is the filament voltage, for 12. So that will be on the 11 to 14. All right, the next one is going to be C, which is the load, and that will be D. All right, and then D will be the setup, which is 1, and then it will be socket 4. All right, here we go. See if it's got some emissions. That one swung up there really good. It's already up to almost a hundred. And it can spun up there. So let's go ahead and check grid leakage. Grid leakage is good. We're going to go to shorts, rotate, looking for the LED, the uh, neon light to come on solid. And being there's none, we'll go back to emission. Everything's looking good. I'm going to hit the live test, and the live test button is activated, reducing the filament voltage on the tube. And so far it has not moved, it's about 92 on the numerical scale. If anything, it raised up a little bit, so it is it's double O good, in other words, it's on the rightmost G, I mean L, of the word good on the meter. So this one I pronounce good. Sure. I'm going to give it a little squirt of Windex. Oh that wiped off the writing. Uh -oh. Whoops. Sorry about that. Alright. So far, so good. Two tubes left. And this one here is the, uh, this is going to be the oscillator. Oscillator first mixer. What this little dude is. And it is a 12 Baker Echo 6. 12 Baker Echo 6 should be right there. It's going to be 12 D14, so 12. D one four. I thought it was going to be exactly the same. Settings is the last two. Anyway, here we go. Emissions. Let's see what this bad boy does. And it has come out of the bad. It has reached good immediately, almost. This one looks like it's going to be a carbon copy of the last one. We'll just let it run. It's right. It's right in between the O and the O. Good. So, getting there. We'll see. Let's go ahead and check for grid leakage. No grid leakage. Go over to shorts. Rotate it. Looking for the uh, neon light indicator, short indicator to come on. Seeing none. Go back to where we are. Oh, let's check it for heater to cathode. No heater to cathode. I forgot to do that on the other ones. Oh well, I think we're fine. Back to emission. Let's do a live test. Live test switch activated. 
As far as fast as this thing came up, I don't expect it to have any issues. And it has held steady between the O's. Good. I think it's going to be good, ladies and gents. So another good two. So this time, I'm just going to use the O. That's an old Motorola tube. 274. Just give it a little cleaning, not try to be too. That's something on there. I think this thing been worked on a few times. So far, I've seen two Sylvania tubes in it, but everything else has been different. That pin is the plate, and it looks a little funky. So I'm just going to kind of lightly scrape it. Try not to take off any coating that might be on here. I'm just There you go. I might. Now, I'm going to let it go with that. I'll check it when I get it all active. Okay, the last thing to do is the detector tube. Looking inside these coils here, making sure that somebody ain't been in. Oh, and this is a 12 AB6. 12 AB6 Alpha Victor 6. Alright, 12 AB6. This is going to be. Maybe this is the detector 2. 12 AB6 is going to reset. Got actually three sections of this tube. Anyway, the filament's going to be 12 volts. That's what the 12 stands for in the tube. And the series is going to be A. And okay, so let's see. C, which is the low, will be F. Alright, and then D is setup, still in one, and then socket number four. There's three elements to this tube. So the 12 AB6, that's why it has three listings here. I know you probably can't see it, but if you have the little manual there, it would tell you. Anyway, let's do emission. Tube is lighting. Yeah, it would be. Filament's coming up, so the emission has popped up. We're already almost to 100. To the 100 on the 100 scale, on the, uh, on the numerical scale. No grid leakage, no shorts, no heater to cathodes, back to emission, do life test. I think this one's going to be fine too. It has not dropped, the life test switch has been activated, and it has not changed. So now we've done that, so let's change it to G5. Which I'm checking the next section of it. No grid leakage, of course. No shorts. I'm not going to go that far. And I'm going to do another live test. This one comes up to 90 on the uh, numerical scale of the test meter. Live test has not changed. So that section of the tube is good. Now, next one is going to be G and then 6. And it checks good as well. I'm not going to bother with the. Uh, Mission test. Alright, so all the tubes appear to be good. That's a good thing. Alright, so I am done with that. Turn this all the way down, turn everything to a setup, make sure it's reset. Close the book, secure it, put it up. Don't need any tubes at this time. Alright. That 
takes care of that. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to take this back offline. I'm going to work on the case a little bit, get rid of some of this. I'm going to get rid of, got some tape on it and stuff like that. I don't know. Got a little rust on it and all that. I don't, what I really want to do is clean the bevel, bevel and clean the front. So I'm going to get rid of this tape right here. And going back here and clean this plastic off the front here. It's got some stuff on it. Get that all pretty. It's just dust. It's been stored in a building somewhere in a storage building or something. I don't know. So I'm going to do that off camera because that'd bore you. I'm going to clean this all the funk all of it that I can. And I'll come back when I got something worth talking about. All right. See ya. All right. Finally, at long last, I got some parts. I ordered a lot of my stuff from Mouser. I ordered these things yesterday, about this time yesterday, and got them in today. One thing I like about them, I may not have another electronic store in town here. Or Radio Shack, for that matter. Well, I got my house. And I have a lot of stuff that I like. Or a lot of stuff that I need, I guess I should say. So, it's been a, been a couple hours since I glued this thing up. The glue on the uh, the glue is a little bit tacky. But anyway, parts. Now I noticed a while ago that there were a couple of resistors. One here, like a 56k. It's a big old resistor. I don't know why it's what, but anyway, and there's another resistor here. I think it's a resistor, but I did not check. But well. Let's see what we got here. 150 ohms. Let's see, got several parts here. 15K, one what? Capacitors. 0022. And one thing that I did, and you guys are probably aware of it, I don't know if you can see it or not. But not only is there the uh, value, which is here, uh, right here I have the part number, C26 and C27, to help me remember. Now what I did, what I did with this, to, with this radio, let's see if I can do this without dropping it. Like right here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's two six on there. That capacitor is C26. So I know which one to replace it with. So C26, let me find my schematic diagram. Ton of paperwork somewhere. Let me see. Every now and then I clean up. No, I ain't. I have a big stack of stuff that I keep. Paperwork here. Oh, 
Here we go. Yep. I found it. Along here with the scratch pad. Alright, let me put all this other mess back up. Sorry about that. Alright. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Here is the diagram. I don't have all my inlays yet. I'm still trying to having problems with my video program, but this is the schematic here. And if I could overlay it better, I would just describe how this works. But I, I don't have an overlay set up in my program right now. I'm working on it. Maybe a few videos from now, I'll get all this stuff working. Anyway, let's see. I want to find the parts list. Here's some. Where's the other capacitor list? Bear with me. There we go. Okay. This capacitor here, C36. I'm sorry, 26. C26 is a paper cap, aka wax capacitor, at 0 0.005 microfarad at 600 volts. And I know you can't see it, but you can take my word for it. Gold arrow box. And it is a 0 0.05 at 600. So I've marked everything down, what their values are. C26 and C27. 0047, which is what the modern equivalent of a 005 is. It's not going to make any difference at all. At 630 volts. This thing here is probably... 5 sixteenths in diameter with about about an inch and a quarter long of these things here, the modern replacements are maybe about, uh, I don't know, 3 thirty seconds in diameter and probably about a half inch long. See how far we've come in 60 years? Anyway, continue to dig through all these parts and pieces. Resistor capacitor. Should be a resistor. Everything in the clear packages are capacitors. So let's see. Oh, here's a 220. Capacitors, electrolytics. Point one at 400. Another resistor. This should be ooh, a point two seven at 250. What that is another electrolytic right here that's the main filter cap I think uh, let's see 470k on resistor doing really good let's see ooh, a 330 half watt caution this back contains moisture sensitive devices it's in that resistor resistor electrolytic capacitor and resistor all right I ain't gonna bore you with the details. Let me do some checking, make sure I got everything I need, and I'll get back. Checking, make sure. Okay. Starting to get ready to start changing the capacitors out, and uh, I wanted to show you something else that you may or may not be aware of. But on all these caps right here, this is C. Uh, this is C1 right here. This is the first one that I want to change. It's 0 0.01 microfarad or some people say microfarad anyway it's a 0 0.01 to 400 volts DC or VDC you'll notice this little bar right here this little uh, black uh, 
mark right here on the capacitor. That does not mean negative. That does not indicate polarity. On that capacitor there, that actually indicates outer foil. These things are the foil, there's, you know, the dielectric has one piece of aluminum strip, dielectric and another, and it, to get those strips in here, it's rolled up, just like a big cinnamon roll, or Yule log, whatever. Anyway, but the outer foil is what this is denoting, which means this outer foil is connected to ground. And the reason they do that is, is it acts as a shield to the other side of the cap right here so this this outer foil always connects to the lowest impedance side of where the capacitor is going in this case ground so this goes to the antenna ground terminal if I remember right so we want that to be shielded we do not if this is put in, in another way in other words this foil was over here that could introduce um, that could introduce hum and AC into the circuit. Um, so, let's see. Right here, negative. Oh, not negative, I'm sorry, the outer foil. you got to make sure about that, especially over here in this audio stage. Audio stage here, let's see. This is the 50C5 right here. That's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You see this bar here is going right here. Let's see. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's pin 5 of the 50C5. So let's have a look. See what that's doing on the schematic. Pin 5 right there. And I think that's, yes, that's C27. Now, what I just noticed on this is kind of odd because the plate of the detector is normally a lower than impedance than the grid of the audio output tube. But they have the minus side, or not, I'm sorry, the full side here. It should go over here. So I see a factory defect right there. All right, let's go over here to the C20, that's a 0.05, C26, comes off the volume control, let's see if I can find the volume control, volume control, C26, it's called a 5000 micro microfarad, or a 5000 microfarad, anyway, this is going to the control grid of the audio first audio and second detector ABC that's what the tube was a while ago they had the three elements in there you had a diode a diode and a grid or a trode excuse me three sections to this tube anyway this control grid is at a higher impedance than the volume control so you'll see here that this resistor here this grid grid leak resistor right here or grid stop is 10 megs Right here, this volume control can be anywhere from a half a meg at its full, at its full, uh, full uh, when the volume control is wide open, or it can be a ground potential, which means this is going to be a lower in, uh, resistance than this, or should I say, um, yeah, impedance than this right here. So if we look on this capacitor, You'll notice that going to the volume control, which could be anywhere from half a mag to zero ohms, there is your foil shield. That is correct, because this side is the grid of the tube, and the grid of a tube is always, always high impedance. So let's see, what else? Uh, again, right here is ground. Here's another capacitor. This foil shield, right there. This is connected to ground. This right here comes over to this coil. That is C21. See if I can find C21 here. Where are you, C21? It's hard to see on the schematic. C20. See, just looking, guys. I can't. Stuff is almost too small for me to see. 
there, C21 right there. Here's the ground. Here's the, here's the ground. This is here is the uh, the opposite end. In other words, the you can call it high side, but it comes over here. Bend switch comes over here. Goes all the way up there. Look to a grid of a tube. And if we come over to C21, you'll see that the foil is connected to ground, and this resistance, this right here, is tied to tied to that coil. It's in parallel with this coil right here. So this side here goes to the tube. Uh, again, that's a high impedance here, and low impedance here. So everything is right except this guy right here. That full shield should be on the plate. So anyway, now what we can do, the new capacitor doesn't really have any lines. Now this one has a line, but I'm not used to seeing that on these. This is a polyester cap. Polypropylene, I'm sorry. This is pretty much what I use. Now, how do you find the... I'm not going to bore you with too much detail. Let's go ahead and pull this capacitor. And change it. This one here is soldered to the frame. So I'm going to a little solder on there. Get it good and hot. not to burn any of these adjacent wires. Alright, get one side off. the full side off which is connected to ground. Sometimes you just these things are handmade of course. So you gotta come in here and just put your solder on there, get it kind of loose. When you solder iron on, heat it just enough where the solder gets loose and you can shake it around. And there you are. First capacitor. Let me clean up this connection just a little bit. Solder sixty something years old. Something like that. Care how old it is, though, it's still better. Still better than the solder that they make today. And we're talking about the Rojas stuff, reduction of hazardous substance, ROHF. And that's what most solder today is uh, doesn't have a lot of lead, if any. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why all your electronics have your cell phones and your video games have yeah, what they call now this one here I know I change up on you a little bit but this capacitor here is not really located in a danger area where it's in danger of getting of touching any other component I try to mimic what's in here already None of these capacitors that I can tell has any heat shrink on them or any sleeving. And I'm not going to do that unless I have some kind of an interference issue with, uh, you know, with it close to something else that it could touch and short out. So, I'm not going to do that. Not on this one. Okay, I got that part done. My solder temperature is a little hot. I had to heat it. Turn my solder iron temperature up. 
All right, that capacitor is done. Set the leads and. Right down here, the C1. I just changed C1. That one is done. Now I'm going to start on the next capacitor, which see, it's going to be C40 and C41. These were not marked on the schematic. They were actually supposed to be shorts, but I think this was an afterthought or a modification later a later series. Anyway, this is a, a couple of uh, C40 and C41, which are 002s. Let me look on my 002s and 600s. So let me find those two capacitors real quick. Here we are. C40 and C41. So... You shall and the full shield is going to the coil. The coils, if I remember right, are the one side of the coil is grounded, the other side goes to the capacitor, which makes it lower impedance than the antenna. I'm gonna go with what they have. So let me do a quick check. See, get my uh, get my figure out which part of this cap is full shield. Shield on that one. Go ahead and mark it with a marker. Just have to replace two of them. We'll go ahead put that there. We'll do the same thing with this capacitor. Even if they may be marked, check your capacitors anyway. Use the scope procedure. Because these things are mass produced and they don't sit there and take the time to figure out where the shield is or the foil. All right, we have these two capacitors now figured out. So let's change one of them and hopefully I won't destroy nothing. But what I'm going to do, make sure you can see, so I'm going to clip that capacitor right there. The reason I clip it, it gives me it gives me control over this lead because I'm on a dangerous spot here. I have this coil. Let me turn that temperature down just a little bit. That a little too hot. This coil, I'm just gonna it's got transformer lead attached to it or transformer wire. Very old, very brittle connection and we don't want to overheat this thing and I'm just going to apply just enough heat there that was pretty easy now I'm going to try to suck some of that solder off of it without getting it too hot just want to clean up the hole where we can get to get the connection through the hole make it look pretty make it look like we care not like my old service days old TV radio service days many many years ago we just had to get them going we didn't put as much finesse into it 
Now if you're restoring an old radio and you think this is any kind of help to you, you know, I'm just trying to impart what little knowledge I have. Remember the full shield, both full shields are pointing toward the coil. So what I'm going to do is because I'm going to make this equidistant. So I'm going to go ahead and put this lead through here. And then I don't have my other pliers. My, I don't have my, they're over there in my toolbox and I haven't went and got them yet. But I have a pair of heavy duty tweezers, tweezer pliers that I like to use. I'm just going to fold that lead over like that. I don't know if you can see it or not, but trust me. Then I'm going to take this one here. Now, you can just tack these things in, which some people do. Well, I kind of like these capacitors here, unless barring something really major. These capacitors will last the life, the rest of the lifespan of this radio. This radio. I don't intend to get rid of it. Who would want it? It will probably stay in with me the rest of my life. And I know my wife is not going to have a need for it. So it's going to become somebody else's property if not going to a landfill. You know, it's just a sad truth. You know, when you get old and die or something happens to me, whatever. You know, it's just when you get old, things, you know, you, your life. All that stuff that you worked hard for and you thought was something you wanted later on in life. When you die, you can't take it with you. So you got all these material possessions that stays, uh... that you can't take with you and nobody else cares as much as you did about it which usually means it's going to wind up in an estate sale and some bald headed and some bald headed guy from some thrift store, not a thrift store, but an antique shop, whatever, will buy it. And he'll buy it just because it looks cool, not because it has any practical value. But he'll buy it, and it'll sit on a shelf, and somebody will buy it. Ooh, that looks cool, and they'll take and buy it, and... They'll take it home and they'll gut it or something or make it put it on a little shelf for decoration or you know something like that. It'll never be what you it'll never be to you what it is or let me rephrase that. It'll never be to them what it is to you. It's just a fact of life. None of us are here forever. All this stuff that we take for granted, all this stuff that makes us go wow right now. When you're laying on your deathbed, it will change the way you think. All this stuff you won't even think about. I'm diabetic. I'm 58 years old. And... I've known I've been diabetic for about five years now. Do I take proper care of myself? Not really. And my doctor got on to me about a week ago now when I went for my checkup. He says, why am I wasting my time with you? If you're not going to do as I say, you know, and then I'd explain to him that I had a heart stent. And he says, well, that should have been your wake-up call because that's only going to get worse. And 
I'm hard headed. I, I like my french fries. I like my hamburgers. I like my chili dogs. But I really need to change. Okay. I really need to change what I do. Alright, we have three caps done. I'm not going to bore you guys. I'll do one more. If, if y'all are interested, I don't know. I, sometimes I go to sleep watching people do this. Here's one right here. This is C21. C21, according to the capacitor, should be a .01 at 400. Look on my little piece. .01 at 400, so let me find C21. This is an empty package. We don't need it no more. C21. C21. We'll change this capacitor here and then I'll shut the camera off and go ahead and do what I can. And when I get it, when I get all the parts changed and everything, all the resistors, we might change the resistor just for fun. But when I get the thing back operational, I'll get you guys back. And we'll uh, we'll continue from there because we'll probably have to. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. I'm going to identify the full size again of this capacitor. All right. Well, let's change this capacitor. Get a slurp of coffee. going to change C21 right there so I see the camera needs to be adjusted just a little bit there we go right there C21 so again I'm just going to reach over here and I'm going to clip it of course the full is going to ground I'm going to raise my solder level back up to 806 degrees Fahrenheit 100 ohm resistor here, that is the uh, middle stage. Let me make sure. I don't remember if I ordered that one or not. Let me see what the resistor number is. Let's see, 100 ohms to ground, that will be R4. I did not order an R4, so I'm not even going to check it because I already know it's good. But if we can do it, we'll put the voltmeter on. On meter on ohms, so put it on 200, and we'll check it. Better to check it than feel bad. But this is just a cathode, cathode bias resistor, basically. And it's measuring 110 ohms. And this thing is, I don't know what tolerance it is, I can't see it. But this is 110 ohms. I'm good with that. You're good with it, I'm good with it. Put this back on volts. Put it back on 2000. Always put your meters back on the highest voltage settings before you turn them off. So let's see. Now I'm a soldering iron and warmed up. I'm going to come down here. Take a little bit of solder. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on this post. And let's see if we can get that capacitor out. Oh, the resistor is in there in the way. Get my needle nose right here. We're going to pull this resistor out of the way. We need to move these two wires. These two wires are dangerously close. We don't want to mess up. I don't want to brand myself either like I'm about to. Move them out of the way a little bit. This is where I need my, my precision pliers. But I think we can get it. Let's see now. Then. Get the resistor out of the way. Now we can go finish this up. One capacitor. Where's the camera? Again, that's a point oh one at four hundred. I had to get it off the other side. The other side of it goes here. Now I've got this thing at the hottest temperature range it can go, so I've got to be careful on this coil. 
I'm just trying to figure out. Yeah, there it is. I'm trying to find the curve. I mean, where the uh, where the wire or the lead is bent, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna try to stretch this thing out. So it's, it's like putting a lot of. I'm not grabbing the post of the coil itself. I'm just grabbing the the capacitor lead itself. That way, when I put a little bit more heat on it, it will come out. Hopefully, I'm trying to be really careful with this. The edge is boiling. It's not wanting to come out too easy. Yeah, just take your time. Remember, this thing's a 60 years old. It's brittle. Got it. Kind of like a dentist pulling your wisdom tooth. Now I'm going to come in here with heat shrink or salt, not heat shrink, solder wick. I'm just going to clean some of this old solder out of here. Oh, there is a crap load of it. Also, I noticed there is a resistor on the back side of this coil that I need to make sure that I don't need to replace it because I'd hate to put this cap in there find out that 470k resistor right there which goes to ground I'd hate to find out that resistor needed to be replaced. It's a 470k resistor. It's R10 I think this is ground they ground these uh, they ground these chassis oh. they ground these chassis All right, this is coming off the transformer, coming on the white wire, white wire coming over here to the switch. I don't remember what that switch is. No, I don't have my case. Uh, let's see. Let me get the schematic. I got to figure out what what part of the circuit this is in. C21, right? Let's find C21. C21 is a 0 0.01 microfarad going to pin 3. Okay. Goes over the CWAM switch. So here's the C21. Goes to the voltage rail. Four hundred seventy K resistor R one. R one is on the replacement list. So see, I needed to check that. This is R one right here. How well you can see it. We'll get to change. Get to change our first resistor. So again, I'm just going to reach in here. So let me find R one. It's in the resistor bag. I don't want to capacitor it over there. Let me find R1. I found R2. R2! Too bad they don't make a Star Wars movie with uh, kind of like Scooby Doo. R2, where are you? <laughs> Well, where's R1? There's R12. There's R11. I know we got an R1 in here somewhere. R14. R16. Uh, here's R1 right here. Alright, R1. I have two R1s. It's R1 and R10. We'll just take this little dude out. one we need out, put the other one back in the bag because we'll need it sooner or later. Put it over there in the stockpile. So next thing I'm going to do, come over here and very carefully, something like that, clip that little dude. Let me get my precision pliers.
This is my precision. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight and pick a bag of these kind up. They got all different kinds. Now they're not ESD rated, but they got different kinds. The whole uh, assortment of them. And uh, really comes in handy when you're doing electronic work. Gives you a little bit more to grab there, I guess you could say. Doesn't take the place of needle nose, but in some instances is better than needle nose. Almost need my glasses. Alright, what I've done. Push that right. I'm taking and just pushing the lead back because it's 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 intertwined. Remember, I told you a few minutes ago that when they build these things, let me get my let me get my close-up glass. I'm not falling out this chair. It's going to be one heck of a video to edit. That's for sure. All right, now I can see. <laughs> anyway, I just take push the lead to get where I can get to it a little bit, and I'll take a pair of nippers or side cutters and or diagonals, should I say diagonal cutters, and I'll just clip one piece of it. That allows me that allows me to be able to grab it and pull it out. Like that. Yeah. Now that I got that done. Pull me out a little bit more. I'm trying to clean this hole out right now. Clean this hole out. Now, got that hole cleaned out. All right. Now go back down here to the other side of the resistor. Yeah, it's a 20% tolerance on this. Probably didn't need to really replace it, but since it's Sometimes you just have to be creative, look at your situation, and figure out what would you do. And I've got this lead out of the way. Now I'm going to reach in here on my diagonal cutters, or dikes, or side cutters. My precision electronics cutters which are Kleins of all things. Klein, Kleins don't mean it's any good anymore. Exolite used to be good, but they're not really good anymore. So what I would recommend if you want to get a pair of dice, find you a bunch on sale and just buy you a whole crap load of them at one time. Because they do wear out. Alright, I got the holes cleaned out now. So R1 and C21. Alright, so I'm going to take and install R1. Poke it through the hole. Take my, my needle nose right here. Oh, hang on, let me get this test lead out of the way. I really like doing this stuff. Gives me something to I work at a radio station as the chief engineer and most of the time I just really sit around doing boring paperwork clerical type stuff and it just kinda when I get to do this stuff at, out in either in the field working on something or in my office or in my shop here I enjoy it
Just trying to make this pretty, make it look like the factory did it. That way somebody else won't open this radio up one day. And whoever, when I die, somebody buys it. The estate sale takes it home and something. All right. After several hours, a lot of work. <sighs> Got all the components changed. to be hard nowadays. Okay. So make this work. Here's the components. Alright. About fifty dollars worth of caps and resistors right here. Let's see, not counting the filter caps. I already showed you those, but let's see what we got here. And if anybody out there that feels these filter these uh these capacitors that need to be changed, just give me your address and I will mail them to you. There, let's see. Just uh there you are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen capacitors. Not counting the ones I forgot about. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine or ten resistors. All out of tolerance and bad and leaky. So and this dude. Completely recant. Everything was put in like I found it. The exception of let's see if I can get in just a little bit here. Filter caps right here. For whatever reason there's a 60 microfarad on on the third stage. There's a 40 coming from the rectifier, goes to a thousand on resistor to a to another 40 and then it goes to a 560 ohm resistor into a 60 microfarad. Oh well. But uh, I try to put them in exactly like they were as far as orientation where they were located in the circuit and everything. Not circuit but where they're physically located. Because when they built these radios, they had all that stuff in mind. Somebody decided that's where they should go. That's where I put them. So, not quite ready to power this thing up yet. I feel pretty certain that it will work. The line, let me get my screwdriver. So the line voltage comes in right here. Line voltage comes in. It goes to the pilot lamp, which is a number 47, and the pin to the uh, full, the uh, rectifier tube, which it does. And, all right. And the other side of that goes to a 0.1 micro ferret capacitor to ground, which it does. So all that's correct. Let's see. And then the output off of pin 8, which is that 2 right there, comes here. Goes. Pin 8 right here. Pin 8. I think, yeah, there's 40 microfarad pin 8. Alright, and then that feeds, uh, usually that will feed a thousand ohm. Comes over, 
to R12, which is a 15K, which is that one. Let's see, and that also goes to the output transformer, which is there, which looks good. All right, comes through the thousand. Comes here's another 40 to ground. Okay, I'm cool with that. I think it's going to work. I just wanted to make sure that everything was good there. So, let's put it up on its side. Let me get a sheeter cord. not built. I uh, don't have my dim ball tester built yet. But I do have an isolated power supply for variable, variable voltage. So for right now I'm just going to Jury rig it till I get it my box built. I was thought that was something I was gonna to do today, but I didn't do it. Involved in other projects. Basically I'm gonna turn this thing on and I'm gonna watch this ball. Turn it on. Open the output voltage to about yeah, 80 volts. I'm going to put my... Here we go. The ball came on bright, went down. That's just the tube filaments. I have a really dim uh, pilot light. thing or I can ground it so I can make voltage measurements. Let's have a look at the B plus. Bring the voltage up a little bit. Getting 38, 40. In about 60 volts. In the output of the rectifier, I'm getting 55, 56 on the first stage. About 55 or 56. Oh, well, let's run it up. We are at full primary voltage. We're getting about 87 volts. Get about 88 volts of B plus. So far, nothing has left the smoke out. Three watts. Let me take out another one. to 
be working. There. Money volts. I don't know what my B plus is supposed to be. But I'm going to turn off the power. Take out my dim bulb. We're going to try this again. No damn bulb. We're going to go directly in. So I'm get this mess out of the way. Alright, here we go. Turn the hole. We are now full voltage. 125 according to the Syncor AC power act. Like 110, 112 volts B plus. Looks good, man. That was a hot receiver.
Well. Um, kind of had video problems. I lost a lot of files with this project. Um, I didn't realize as I was working that my card was full. I did not see that. So uh, I lost a lot of video on this project. I did get the radio working. Uh, I did do an alignment on it. Uh, it seems to work really good. It needs a line cord on the back. Line cord wore out. It needs a polarized line cord. Uh, even though the chassis is isolated from ground, I would rather have a polarized line cord on there just to help out, just in case. Of course, I'll be the only one that ever uses it. But anyway, it, turned, it, uh, it tuned up really good. I did the variable capacitors that adjusted the uh, the uh, oscillator and the uh, and also the uh, input tuning those capacitors looked like they had wax in them I couldn't get them to adjust they but they had wax in them I, you know, it came from apparently it was stored in a hot location now I could be wrong about this but the, apparently they were stored in a hot location and some of that wax from the capacitors must have got on them because the plates of the capacitors uh, uh, adjustable micro capacitors would not adjust. I had to break them loose. Uh, but 
they really need replaced because they were really funny so I tuned it the best I could I lined the IF section the thing seemed to be really sensitive worked really good um, it's good enough because I probably never use it you never know but I've got so much electrical noise around here it's just unreal uh, and it you know I have a ham radio station that you can probably see some of it behind me there somewhere back here uh, yeah over there anyway I've got some noise that's horrendous so that's another part of the spring project it's figuring out where all this noise is and trying to fit, you know get a repair but anyway uh, sorry about losing the rest of the video I'm still I haven't made a video in quite a while I've I, I been here today it's probably been two years so uh, also the software that I was using was um, uh, power director and it just did not like my computer I did uh, it, it had rendering issues and things like that so I just decided to heck with it and I got rid of it uh, deleted it off my computer because I wasn't gonna sit there and fight it and put a new sound card so I've got Corel right now that I'm trying as a you know as a uh, uh, trial see how it works I downloaded another one this morning called olive but when I started using it my sound was out of sync with my video so you know and it was open source stuff here and it probably works for 90 percent of the people out there but it didn't work for me and I didn't feel like trying to troubleshoot it so so I'm back to using Corel I'm about to get I can do a lot of basic stuff at Corel and this is part of what I made this video for uh, as an experiment to learn how to use the program editing software I know that I got some rough cuts in this um, but I'm just trying to learn and give me something to do uh, and, and produce a video but anyway um, hopefully uh, I would like to get back on to going back under tubes you know I noticed when we were doing tubes all, uh, on this project yesterday we were looking at the vacuum tubes and trying to figure out what the date codes were uh, be honest with you 30 years ago I could tell you the date codes and how to do it back when well actually yeah about 30 years ago I could tell you but I haven't done it in so long I forgot there's a lot of things that I've done and forgot so anyway I think I might make a video on dating vacuum tubes that would be interesting uh, so I'm gonna do that right there and we may uh, we may visit the radio again the little uh, SW54 to have a look at it because I got to change the line cord on it the line cord on it's bad uh, and I forgot to order one but anyway thank you for uh, watching the video uh, sorry it's been forever I know I don't have that many followers if even one but whoever is following me thank you for doing that uh, but hopefully I can get some better stuff uh, make some better videos and learn how to use the software better and try not to become a boring type person anyway uh, it's almost Christmas here so I'm getting ready for that and I'm gonna finish editing this video and I'll just go ahead and post it anyway uh, until next time I